Triumph of Life by Percy B. C. Shelley. Swift as a spirit, hastening to his task, of glory and of good the sun sprang forth, rejoicing in his splendor and the mask. Of darkness fell from the awakened earth. The smokeless altars of the mountain snows flamed above crimson clouds and at the birth of light the ocean's horizon arose to which the birds tempered their matin lay. All flowers in field or forest which unclose their streaming eyelids to the kiss of day swinging their censers in the element with orient incense lit by the new ray burn slow and inconsumably and send their odorous sighs up to the smiling air and in succession do did continent isle, ocean, and all things that in them wear the form and character of mortal mold rise as the sun their father rose to bear their portion of the toil of which he'd of old took as his own and then imposed on them but I whom thoughts which must remain untold had kept as wakeful as the stars that gem the cone of night how they were laid asleep stretched my faint limbs beneath the hoary stem which an old chestnut flung athwart the steep of a green apennine before me fled the night behind me rose the day the deep was at my feet and heaven above my head when a strange trance over my fancy grew which was not slumber for the shade it spread was so transparent that the scene came through as clear as when a veil of light is drawn over evening hills they glimmer and i knew that i had felt the freshness of that dawn bathed in the same cold dew my brow and hair and sate as thus upon that slope of lawn under the soft same bow and heard as there the birds the fountains and the ocean hold sweet talk and music through the enamored air and then a vision on my brain was rolled as in that trance of wondrous thought i lay this was the tenor of my waking dream Methought I sate beside a public way, thick strewn with summer dust, and a great stream of people there was hurrying to and fro, numerous as gnats upon the evening loom, all hastening onward, yet none seemed to know whither he went or whence he came or why. He made one of the multitude, yet so was born amid the crowd as through the sky, one of the million leaves of summer's beer, old age, and youth, manhood, and infancy mixed in one mighty torrent did appear, some flying from the thing they feared, and some seeking the object of another's fear, and others as with steps toward the tomb, poured on the trodden worms that crawled beneath, and others mournfully within the gloom of their own shadow walked and called it teeth. And some fled from it as it were a ghost, half fainting in the affliction of vain breath. But more with motions which each other crossed, pursued or shunned the shadows the clouds threw, or birds within the noonday ether lost. Upon that path where flowers never grew, and weary with vain toil and faint for thirst, heard not the fountains whose melodious dew out of their mossy cells forever burst, nor felt the breeze which from the forest told of grassy paths and woodlawns interspersed with overarching elms and caverns cold and violet banks where stream sweet dreams brood, but they pursued their serious folly as of old. And as I gazed, methought that in the way the throng grew wilder, as the woods of June when the south wind shakes the unextinguished unext day, and a cold glare intenser than the noon, but icy cold obscured with light. The sun as he, the stars like the young moon, when on the sunlit limits of that night, her white shell trembles amid crimson air, and whilst the sleeping tempest gathers might, doth, as a herald of its coming bear, the ghost of her dead mother, 
Two stem form bends in the dark ether from her infant's chair. So came a chariot on the silent storm of its own rushing splendor, and a shape so sate as within as one whom years deform. Beneath a dusky hood and double cape, crouching within the shadow of a tomb, and over what seemed the head, a cloud-like crape was bent to dun, and faint ethereal gloom, tempering the light upon the chariot's beam. A Janus fidgeted shadow did assume the guidance of that wonder when your team. The shapes which drew it in thick lightnings were lost. I heard alone on the air's soft stream the music of their ever-moving wings. All the four faces of that charioteer had their eyes banded. Little profit brings speed in the van and blindness in the rear. Nor then avail the beams that quench the sun, nor that his banded eyes could pierce the sphere. Of all that is, has been, or will be done. So ill was the car guided, but it passed with solemn speed majestically on. The crowd gave way, and I arose aghast, or seemed to rise, so mighty was the trance, and saw like clouds upon the thunder blast. A million with fierce song and maniac dance ranging around seems such the jubilee as when to greet some conqueror's advance. Imperial Rome poured forth her living sea from senate house and prison and theater. When freedom left those who, upon the free, had bound a yoke which soon they stopped to be- stoop to bear, nor wanted here the true similitude of a triumphal pageant for one error, the chariot rolled, a captive multitude was driven, and all those who had grown old in power or misery, all those who had have their age subdued by action or by suffering, and whose hour was drained to its last sand and wheel or woe, so that the trunk survived both fruit and flower, all those whom fame or infamy must grow, till the great winter lay the form and name of their own earth, with them forever low, all but the sacred few who could not tame their spirits to the conqueror, but as soon as they had touched the world with living flame, fled back like eagles to their native moon, or those who put aside their diadem of earthly thrones or gems to the last one were there, for they of Athens and Jerusalem were neither mid the mighty captives seen, nor mid the ribald crowd that followed them, or fled before, now swift and fierce and obscene, the wild dance maddens in the van, and those who lead it, fleet as the shadows on the green. Outspeed the chariot, and without the repose mixed with each other, in tempestuous measure to savage music, wilder as it grows, they, tortured by the agonizing pleasure, convulsed on the rapid whirlwind spun of the great, of that fierce spirit, whose unholy leisure was soothed by mischief since the world begun, throw back their heads and loose their streaming hair, and in their dance round her who dims the sun, maidens and youths fling their wild arms in the air, as their feet twinkle, they recede and now, bending within each other's atmosphere, kindle invisibly, and as they glow like moths, by light attracted and repelled, off to new bright destruction come and go, to like two clouds into one veil impelled, that shake the mountains when their lightnings mingle and die in rain. The fiery brand which held their nature snaps ere the shocks cease to tangle. One falls and then another in the past senseless, nor is the desolation single. Yet ere I can say where the chariot hath passed over them, nor other race I find, but as of foam after the ocean's wrath is spent upon the desert shore behind old men and women, foully disarrayed, shake their gray hair in the insulting wind, limp in the dance and strain with limbs decayed to reach the car of light, which leaves them still farther behind and deeper in the shade. But not the less with impotence of will, 
they wheel through ghastly shadows interposed around them and around each other and fulfill their work and to the dust whence they arose sink in corruption veils them as they lie and frost in these performs what fire in those struck to the heart by this sad pageant try half to myself i said and what is this whose shape is that within the car and why i would have added is all here amiss but a voice answered life i turned and knew O oh, heaven, have such mercy and such wretchedness that what I thought was an old root which grew to strange distortion out of the old hillside was indeed one of that deluded crew and that the grass which me thought hung so wide and white was but his thin discolored hair and that the holes it vainly sought to hide were or had been eyes if thou canst forbear to join the dance which I had well forborne said the grim feature of my thought to wear I will now tell that which to this deep scorn led me and my companions and relate the progress of the pageant since the morn of thirst of knowledge does not thou sabate follow it even to the night but I am weary then like one who with the weight of his own words is staggered wearily he paused and ere he could resume I cried first who art thou before thy memory I feared loved hated suffered did and died and if the spark which with Heaven that my spirit earth had with no pure nutriment supplied. Corruption would not now thus much inherit of what was one true soul, nor this disguise stained that within which still disdains to wear it. If I have been extinguished, yet there rise a thousand beacons from the spark I bore. And who are those chained to the car? The wise, the great, the unforgotten, they who wore mitres and helms and crowns, a wreaths of light. Signs of thought's empire over thought their lore Taught them not this to know themselves their might Could not repress the mutiny within And for the morn of truth they feigned Deep night caught them ere evening Who is he with his chain upon his breast And his hands crossed on his chain The child of a fierce hour he sought to win the world And lost all it did contain Of greatness in its hope destroyed and more of fame and peace than virtue's self can gain without the opportunity which bore him on its eagle's pinion to the peak from which a thousand climbers have before fallen as Napoleon fell. I felt my cheek alter to see the great form pass away whose grasp had left the giant world so weak that every pygmy kicked it as it lay and much I grieved to think how power and will in opposition rule our mortal day and why God made irreconcilable good in the means of good and for despair I have to stain in my eyes desire to fill with the spent vision of the times that were and scarce have ceased to be dost thou behold said then my guide those spoilers spoiled Voltaire, Frederick, and Kant Catherine and Leopold chain Horion Ox demagogue and sage whose name the French world thinks already old. For in the battle life and they did wage she remained conqueror I was overcome by my own heart alone which neither age nor tears nor infamy nor now the tomb could temper to its objects let them pass I cried. The world in its mysterious doom is not so much more glorious than it was that I desire to worship those who drew new figures on its false and fragile glass. As the old faded figures ever new rise in the bubble, paint them how you may. We have but thrown, as those before us threw our shadows on it as it passed away. But mark how chained to the triumphal chair, the mighty phantoms of an elder day. All that is mortal of great Plato there expiates the joy and woe. His master knew not that star that ruled his doom was too far fair, and life where one law Lord long that flower of heaven grew not, conquered the heart by love, which gold or pain or age or sloth or slavery could subdue not, and near walk the twain. The tutor and his pupil, whom the minion followed as tame as vulture in a chain. The world was darkened beneath either pinion of him whom from the flock of conquerors, fame singled as her thunder-bearing minion. The other, long outlived it, both woes and wars throned in the new thoughts of men. 
and still had kept the jealous keys of truth's eternal doors, if Bacon's spirit had not leapt like lightning out of darkness, he compelled the proteus shape of nature as it slept, to wake and to embar the caves that held the treasure of the secrets of its reign. See the great bards of old who windly quelled the passions which they sung, as if by their strain may well be known their living melody tempers its own contagion to the vein of those who are infected with it. I have suffered what I wrote or violent pain, and so my words were seeds of misery, even as the deeds of others, not as theirs, I said. He pointed to a company, in which I recognized in the days, of Caesar's crime and from him Constantine, the anarchs old, whose force and murderous names had founded many a sceptre bearing line, and spread the plague of blood and gold abroad, and Gregory and John and men divine, who rose like shadows between man and God, till that eclipse still hanging under him was worshipped by the world over which they strode, for the true sun it quenched. Their power was given but to destroy, replied the leader. I am one of those who have created even, if it be but a world of agony. Whence camest thou, and whither thou goest thou? How did thy course begin, I said, and why? Mine eyes are sick of this perpetual flow of people, and my heart of one sad thought speak. Whence I came, partly I seem to know, and how and by what paths I have been brought to this dread past, methinks, even thou mayst guess why this should be my mind cannot compass not. Whither the conqueror hurries me still less, but follow thou and from spectator turn, actor or victim in this wretchedness, and what thou wouldst be taught I learn or learn. From thee now listen in the April prime, when all the forest tops began to burn with kindling green, touched by the azure climb of the young year, I found myself asleep under a mountain which from unknown time had gone into a cavern, high and deep and when, and from it came a gentle rivulet, whose water like clear air in its calm sweep bent the soft grass and kept forever wet the stems of the sweet flowers and filled the grove with sound which all who hear must needs forget. All pleasure and all pain, all hate and love which they had known before that hour of rest, a sleeping mother then would dream not of the only child who died upon her breast at eventide, a king would mourn no more, the crown of which his brow was dispossessed when the sun lingered over his ocean floor to gild his arrival's new prosperity. Thou wouldst forget, thus vainly to deplore, ills which if ills can find no cure from thee, the thought of which no other sleep will quell, nor other music blot from memory. No, so sweet, so and deep is the oblivious spell, and whether life had been before that sleep, the heaven which I imagine were a hell. Like this harsh world in which I wake to weep, I know not I rose, and for a space the scene of woods and waters seemed to keep. Though it was not now, though it was now broad day, and gentle trace of light diviner than the common sun sheds on the common earth, and all the place was filled with magic sounds woven into one. Oblivious melody, confusing sense amid the gliding waves and shadows done. And as I looked, the bright omnipresence of morning through the orient cavern flowed, and the sun's image radiantly intense burned on the waters of the well that glowed like gold and threaded all the forest's maze with winding paths of emerald fire there stood. Amid the sun, as he amid the blaze of his own glory on the vibrating floor of the mountain, paved with flashing rays, a shape all light which, with one-handed fling, dew on the earth, and as if she were the dawn, and the invisible rain did ever sing. A silver music on the mossy lawn, still before me on the dusky grass, Cyrus her many-colored scarf had drawn. In her right hand she bore it, 
A crystal glass melting the bright nectar. The fierce splendor fell from her as she moved under the mass of the deep cavern, and with palms so tender, their tread broke not the mirror. Its billow glided along the river and did bend her head under the dark boughs, till like a willow her fair hair sweeped the bosom of the stream that whispered with sigh of delight to be its pillow as one enamored is upborne in dream over lily paven lakes amid silver mist to wondrous music so this shape might seem partly to tread the waves with which feet which kissed the dancing foam partly to glide along the air which roughened the moist amethyst or the faint morning beams that fell among the trees or the soft shadows of the trees and her feet ever to the ceaseless song of leaves and winds and waves and birds and bees and falling drops moved in measure new yet sweet as on the summer evening breeze up from the lake a shape of golden dew between two rocks athwart the rising moon dances in the wind where never eagle flew and still her feet no less than the sweet tune to which they move it seem it as the move to blot the thoughts of him who glazed on them and soon all that was seemed as if it had been not and all the gazer's mind was thrown beneath her feet like embers and she thought by thought trampled its sparks into the dust of death as day upon the threshold of the east treads out the lamps of the night until the breath of darkness filling even the least of heaven's living eyes like day she came making the night a dream and ere she ceased to move as one beneath desire and shame suspended i said as as it doth seem thou comest from the realm without a name into this valley of perpetual dream show whence i came and where i am and why pass not away upon the passing stream arise and quench thy thirst was her reply and as a lily shut stricken by the wand of dewy morning's vital alchemy i rose and bending at her sweet command touched with faint lips the cups she raised and suddenly my brain became as sand where the first wave had more than half erased the track of deer on desert labrador while the fierce wolf from which they fled amazed leaf his his stamp visibly upon the shore until the second burst saw on my sight first a new vision never seen before and the fair shape waned in the coming light as veil by veil the silent splendor drops from lucifer amid the chrysolite of sunrise ere it strike the mountain tops and as the presence of that faintest fairest planet although then seen is felt by one who hopes that his day's path may end as he began it in that star's smile whose light is like the scent of a jonquil when evening breezes fan it or the soft note in which his dear lament the breskian shepherds breathe are the caress that turned his weary slumber to content so knew i in that light's severe excess the presence of that shape which on the stream move it as I move it along the wilderness more dimly than a day appearing dream, the ghost of a forgotten form of sleep, a light from heaven whose half extinguished had beam, through the sick day in which we wake to weep, glimmers forever sought, forever lost. So did that shape its obscure tenor keep its side my path, as silent as a ghost, but with the new vision as its cold bright scar, with savage music, stunning music, lost the forest, as if from some dead war triumphantly returning the loud million fiercely extolled the fortune of her star. <clears throat> A moving arch of victory, the vermilion and green and azure plumes of iris had built high over the green-winged pavilion and underneath the ethereal glory clad the wilderness and far before her flew the tempest of the splendor which forbade shadow to fall from leaf or stone the crew seemed in that light like atomies that danced within a sunbeam some upon the new embroidery of the flowers and that did enhance the grassy rest of the desert played 
Forgetful of the chariot, swift advance, others stood gazing to it in the shade. Of the great mountain, its light left them dim, others outspeeded it, and others made circles around it like the clouds that swim. Brand the high moon in a bright sea of air, and nowhere did it follow. With exulting him, the chariot and the captives fettered there. But all like bubbles on an eddying flood fell into the same track as last, and were borne upward. I among the multitude was swept me. Sweetest flowers delayed not long. Me, not the shadow nor the solitude. Me, not the falling stream's lethean song. Me, not the phantoms of that earlier form which moved upon its motion, but among the thickest billows of the living storm I plunged and bared my bosom to the climb of that cold light whose air soon deform. Before the chariot had begun to climb the opposing steep of that mysterious dell, Behold a wonder worthy of the rhyme of him whom from the lowest depths of hell through every paradise and through all glory love led serene and who returned to tell in words of hate and all the wondrous story of how all things are transfigured except love for death as is a sea which our wrath makes hoary the world can hear not the sweetest notes that move the sphere whose light is melody to lovers a wonder worthy of his rhyme the grove grew dense with shadows to its inmost covers the earth was gray with phantoms in the air it was peopled with dim forms as when there hovers a flock of vampire bats before the glare of the tropic sun bringing air evening strange night upon some Indian isle thus where phantoms diffused around and some did fling shadows of shadows and yet unlike themselves behind them some like eaglets on the wing were lost in the white blaze others like elves danced in a thousand unimagined shapes and upon these sunny streams and grassy shells and others sate chattering like restless apes on vulgar paws and voluble like fire some made a cradle of the ermine capes of kingly mantles some upon the tire of pontiffs sate like vultures others played within the crown which girt the empire babies or an idiot's brow and made their nest in it they old antimize sat hatching their bare brood under the shade of demon wings and laughed from their dread eyes to reassume the delegated power arrayed in which these worms did monarchize who make this earth their charnel others more humble like falcons set upon the fist of common men and round their heads did soar were like small gnats and flies as thick as mist on evening marshes thronged about the brow of lawyer, statesman, priest, and theorist, and others, like discolored flakes of snow, on fairest bosoms in the sunniest hair, fell and as were melted by the youthful glow, which with they distinguished for like tears they wear, a veil to those form whose faint lids they rained in drops of sorrow, I became aware of whence those forms proceeded which thus stained the track in which we moved as their brief space from every morn the beauty slowly waned <clears throat> from every firmest limb and fairest face the strength and freshness fell like dust and left the action and the shape without the grace of life the marble brow of lute was cleft with care and in the eyes where once hope shone desire like a lioness bereft its last cub glared ere it died each one of that great crowd since forth incessantly these shadows numerous as the dead leaves clung in autumn evening from a poplar tree each like himself and like each other were at first but soon distorted seemed to be obscure clouds moldered by the casual air and of this stuff the cars create ray rut all the busy phantoms that were there as the sun shakes the cloud thus on the way mask after mask fell from the countenance and form of all and long before the day was old the joy which white like heaven's glance 
The sleepers in the oblivious valley died, and some grew weary of the ghastly dance and fell, as I have fallen by the wayside. Though soonest from his forms my shadows passed, and least of strength and beauty did abide. Then what is life, I said, and then the cripple cast his eye upon the car which now had rolled onward as if that look must be the last, and answered, Happy those for whom the folded of 